Good evening, everyone. My name is Dan Koop Lichty, and I'm Director of Alumni Engagement, and I'm also the International Student Advisor here at Goshen College. In light of the pandemic, many things are going virtual this year, including all of the homecoming events this week. I want to welcome you to the first ever GC Talk. The GC Talks are a year-long set of presentations, presentations that will feature many of our annual lectureships and will include um, presentations from the Goshen College faculty, students, alumni, and friends of the college. The series will be sponsored by the GC Alumni Council. I want to start by sharing a brief video uh, from Javier Hernandez, who's the Alumni Council Chair. He recorded these, this video from his Chicago apartment where he is working these days. Hi, good evening. My name is Javier Hernandez, Chair of the Goshen College Alumni Council. The Council is pleased to be hosting a series of presentations this academic year called the GC Talks. We hope you enjoy tonight's talk and we warmly welcome you to join us for future ones. To learn more or to view previous talks, you can go to goshen.edu backslash GC Talks. Thank you. Tonight we have the opportunity to learn about one of the college's new majors, the Criminal Justice and Restorative Justice major. I'm pleased to introduce to you Regina Sean Stolzfus and Rob Brenneman. Regina is an alum of the class of 1984. She completed her doctorate in 2017 from the Chicago Theological Seminary. She's a prolific speaker and writer. She has a forthcoming chapter entitled Pacifism and the Assault on Marginalized Bodies and it will be in Liberating the Politics of Jesus, Studies in Anabaptist Theology and Ethics. Regina teaches courses in Bible, Women's and Gender Studies, and Conflict Transformation. Rob joined the faculty this fall. He is a professor of criminal justice and sociology. He is also a prolific speaker and writer. His research focuses on the impact of violence on human flourishing. His book, Homies and Hermanos, God and Gangs in Central America takes a close look at the lives of 63 former gang members, many of whom joined an evangelical congregation as part of their attempt to extricate themselves from gang violence. His latest book, Building Faith, A Sociology of Religious Structures, is co-authored with Brian Miller and examines the relationship between architecture and community. I will now invite and welcome Rob and Regina to share with you. Regina will give the background of the development of this new major, and Rob will share details about how the major is structured. At the end of the presentation, there will be a chance for them to respond to your comments and questions. If you, have, if you are joining us via the Zoom webinar, you can interact with us through the Q&A function at the bottom of your Zoom screen. You put your questions or comments there, and I will monitor those during those comments and questions during the presentation, and we'll get to as many of them as we can at the end of the presentation. At this point, I'll turn it over to, to Rob and Regina. Thanks so much, Dan. Uh, hi, everybody. We are really glad that you are joining us tonight to hear a little bit about this new major. We are really excited about it, and I know that a lot of times when people hear about it, they wonder about the title. It's a really long title, Criminal Justice and Restorative Justice. We see this program as this new major as building on to work that we've already been doing in our program with the Peace, Justice and Conflict Studies major and the Peace and Conflict Studies minor and our partnerships with Goshen Police Department, Elkhart County, uh, corrections system, the work that we're already doing with other partners in the community, Center for Community Justice in Elkhart, all of those conversations are part of what our students in PJCS, Peace Justice Conflict Studies, are already engaged in. And especially after the summer that we've had, it, it seems really clear to us that thinking about the justice system as it exists and the restorative justice, restorative justice programs and theories uh, really is needed in our world right now. We saw an outpouring of community interest last February when Michelle Alexander, author of The New Jim Crow, came to our campus and people from this community, from Elkhart County and neighboring counties, packed out 
the music center, over 900 people came to hear uh, Michelle Alexander talk about the incarceration system in our country um, being a really big problem that we need to have good thinkers involved in and we are thinking about our students as part of this. So the program rolls out this fall. Rob joined our faculty and is heading that up. A little bit about the background. We had a donor contribute with interest in a criminal justice and restorative justice program. We went, we spent about a year and a half researching other programs, thinking about who we are and what we want to do overall with the Goshen College mission. Certainly peace and conflict studies and thinking theologically about these issues are part of what we have been doing and what we want to continue doing, particularly with a focus on the criminal justice system. And so that's a little bit of the background of where the idea came from. We're really, really, really uh, glad that there's so much interest and community support around this idea of thinking about criminal justice system through a restorative justice lens and thinking about the kinds of questions that restorative justice seeks to answer, looking at crime and violence as violations of people and relationships and thinking about how is it that people and our relationships with one another, what are the obligations that need community support for acknowledgement of wrongs that have been done, rehabilitation of people who have offended and the relationships within our communities with people who are currently incarcerated, people who have been victimized by crime and what happens when those when we are all in a community together. So I'm really interested in the questions that people have about that and very interested in the support from the community that continues on working with us as we think through these problems. Uh, I'm going to toss it over to Rob now. He'll talk more about the nuts and bolts of the program as it is coming together under his leadership. Hi, and thanks, Regina, um, for that introduction. And um, hi, everybody out there. I am delighted to be here, although I, I will admit that um, it can be a little nerve wracking looking at a screen and imagining um, not being able to see our audience, even though um, some of us uh, faculty have had more practice than we might have imagined at um, teaching to a screen it's still a little nerve wracking while we're here. So I'll do my best and I'm trying to picture your faces um, there. I'm really excited to be here. Um, I think I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself and then I'm gonna share my screen with you and um, share some um, ideas about the program and tell you a little bit about what's going on. But it wouldn't be um, complete if you didn't hear the train um, crossing right behind my office here in WISE uh, 300. Um, so um, I um, am a sociologist who in some ways backed into this field of um, criminal and restorative justice um, in college and as a volunteer with Mennonite Central Committee in um, Guatemala City. I usually thought of myself as a peace and justice Christian. I wouldn't have said I'm a criminal justice type of guy. Um, but during my time in Guatemala, the nature of violence was changing in Central America and in a lot of the world, actually. And eventually, I became interested in um, gangs and youth violence. And so that was the kind of, when I finished my term with Mennonite Central Committee, um, I uh, decided to do uh, research in sociology and, and do my research on Central American gangs. And eventually, that brought me to, to not only conducting research, but teaching about um, gangs and the criminal justice system. And I have come to believe deeply that how we approach justice and the kinds of institutions that we build matter enormously for peace, and especially if we think about peace in terms of shalom, which is the well-being of individuals and their community. And so I believe that um, the criminal justice system can contribute or detract from 
um, shalom as we know it. So um, for Mennonites like me, it's been a, a, a learning, a bit of a learning journey as I go, um, but I'm privileged to be able to teach about both the problems with the US justice system and what we as individuals and uh, what our students can do to make it better. So um, with that introduction, I think I will switch to a screen sharing mode. Um, and I'll start telling you about the program. So what I'm going to share with you is essentially a, um, a takeoff on a presentation that I uh, have done for admissions aimed at um, introducing prospective students to the program, but it's a way of teach, um, explaining what our program is like in terms of three questions. What is um, criminal and restorative justice as a major? Um, what are the two fields? Um, what's unique about Goshen College's uh, program? And what students might be able to do with the major, the kind of career trajectories that they might have um, with this major. And after that, um, as Regina um, and Dan shared, I'm happy to answer any questions um, that you might have. Um, so most people and including many students um, have some sort of a sense of what criminal justice is. And the way I like to explain it is as a field of study aimed at understanding why and where crime develops and what are the best tools for presenting it, especially in an institutional context. The other way to think of criminal justice is um, as a social system aimed at providing public safety while safeguarding individual rights. And that's really the tension that every um, criminal justice system has to negotiate in some way or another. Restorative justice um, involves an approach to justice that involves repairing the harm done by criminal acts. And it really is um, a way of, uh, and Regina can and did a better job of explaining it, but this is kind of a quick and dirty overview of, of restorative justice. It involves repairing the harm, not rather than thinking about who did what and what the law says they deserve because as a punishment, this is what's happened to the community and whose responsibility is it to address the harm and how. Um, it, it, restorative justice is both a movement and a lot of people don't know it's a growing professional field with a lot of opportunities, um, uh, new opportunities emerging. Um, in terms of the major criminal and, and restorative justice, some people might have the question of whether or not these two things can get along and Regina's already um, spoken to that a little bit, but I wanted to just emphasize that these two um, approaches already do get along. Um, there are many restorative justice programs that are already woven into the um, traditional criminal justice system in places like Vermont, where I um, was teaching prior to coming to, to Goshen. Um, restorative justice is woven right into the Department of Corrections system. Um, and places like Minnesota and elsewhere, that's the case as well. In other places, restorative justice is distinct um, and the programs are separate institutionally from cr the criminal justice system. So they're different ways of doing it, but they certainly um, belong together when we're thinking about justice and equity, um, they, they certainly go together. So we're happy to bring those two together um, in this program. In terms of what's unique about what we're starting to refer to in shorthand as CJRJ, um, criminal justice and restorative justice at Goshen. Um, first of all, what we think is unique about our program is its interdisciplinarity. Um, we are um, determined not to build a kind of a, a just a training program. Um, this is not intended to be simply um, a cop shop. Um, this is intended to be a program that educates. And the only way to do that is to build a truly liberal arts major that is interdisciplinary by intent. Um, our majors, we hope, will um, build the skills to be able to find and evaluate social research um, and, an under and an ability to understand the social and psychological factors guiding human behavior of all kinds. Um, 
finally, we want our students to learn to be able to communicate effectively and or, um, in both oral and written format. So these are kind of three areas that we want to make sure um, students are grounded in um, in this program. Second, a second unique feature about um, this major at Goshen is our emphasis on cultural competence. And I don't have to tell Goshen College alumni about how important it is for all Goshen students to learn to be culturally competent. And, and that's really happening in two ways on the, on the Goshen College campus. First of all, through the SST program, the celebrated um, and really unique SS, um, study service term, but also through the diverse student body, which um, some of you may have already learned about uh, that um, the Goshen College student body is now more than 25% um, Latino and um, Latina and in addition to other groups represented here, um, we're pre we think this is a good place. You don't even have to leave the campus to learn um, to communicate effectively with diverse populations. And that's a skill that the criminal justice system really needs. Um, and finally, um, the emphasis on social justice and awareness of uh, racial, ethnic, and gender diversity is woven through the curriculum here, and I think some of you know this well, and it continues to be a point of emphasis here at Goshen. Finally, um, we think our program is, is unique in terms of integrating faith and practice. Um, a great example of this, some of you might have already learned about, is the Innovative Inside Out program, which is a uh, very popular May term class here at Goshen College. Everyone's been telling me about it. I was already reading about it before I came here. It's um, such an exciting program. I can't wait to get involved in it. Um, and I'm taking steps to do that now, um, which involves courses done in which half of the class um, are Goshen College students and half of the class are residents at the Elkhart um, uh, correctional complex. And it's really just a powerful learning experience in some ways, a kind of a cross-cultural experience for many students. And um, there's nothing like getting to, no way to get to know the criminal justice system better than to see it from the inside, as it were. Um, in addition, all students, and, and um, with some of the revisions we're making to this program, our goal is to make um, participation in a May term inside out course a requirement for all criminal justice and restorative justice majors. Additionally, all students will have to complete an internship that will involve a placement in a community with a restorative justice or criminal justice organization. Um, uh, and finally, our core curriculum invites students to see the links between faith, peace building, and community. And part of the idea behind this program, as it was made clear to me when I first visited and virtually to, to learn about this um, position, was that this is part of Goshen's attempt to look for ways to contribute to peace building right here in our own community, right here in Elkhart County. Where are the ways that we can contribute to peace building where we are, in addition to preparing peace builders that go out? Um, I am not going to lead you one by one through all the course requirements here, but I am um, kind of briefly the program will, will involve 45 credits, um, 11 courses that are related to um, criminal justice, interdisciplinary um, social science courses, restorative justice, um, and a requirement in race, class, and ethnic relations. Um, they'll get exposure to law, corrections, and um, law enforcement in that sort of set of core courses. And then in addition, they'll get exposure to um, themes of justice and equity in a two course um, sequence chosen from uh, some options. Um, they'll have to have a course in politics and policy, and they'll have to have a course in either statistics or um, Spanish or, or American Sign Language. We want our, our graduates to have something, have some skills to be able to contribute um, to they're to the organizations that they work for and with everyone I've talked to, I've spoken with, um, the ability to communicate with diverse 
um, populations is enormously in demand in the field, especially of law enforcement, but also in the field of law. Um, and also, um, we're awash in statistics, but we don't have enough people to um, thoughtfully interpret, make sense of, and present those statistics. And so that's um, an option uh, that students will either have to have a course in stats or, or in um, an additional course at the 200 level in um, a foreign language or ASL. Um, these are some of these are some adjustments we're hoping to make soon in um, in the major uh, requirements. But all indications are that they will probably something very close to this will be what the final final um, set of course requirements is. A lot of our students ask what they can do with a criminal justice and restorative justice major. So some of the things that we hope that they can. Uh, we expect some of them to do, and we hope that they can do well, um, involve law enforcement. And this is really a new direction for Goshen College, and we're aware of it, um, that some students, um, and I've already spoken with some of our prospective students, and um, well, especially with our, our current students, we have a class of um, about seven majors right now who just came in and um, at least one of them hopes to be a police officer and um, we want graduates of this program to be the best officers of the peace that they can possibly be to contribute to peace in their community um, they might aspire to be a detective a park ranger campus safety officer um, work for a, a federal organization or something like a school resource officer. Another career pathway would be legal careers, um, things like law school to be a prosecutor, public defender, a judge, a criminal lawyer, a, a, a legal clerk, a paralegal. These are some of the um, potential pathways for students coming out of this program. Now, and well, I'll say more about that in a moment. Corrections is another field things like uh, probation officer, warden, drug counselor, um, correctional officer, juvenile probation officer. Those are the kinds of things that some of these students will be um, looking to go into, but also, of course, restorative justice. And we hope that some of our students, our graduates will become, um, will work at community justice centers or become a community justice coordinator, uh, a mediator, a juvenile justice coordinator. Um, uh, many of these organizations I'm learning um, are desperate for uh, researchers and grant writers, researchers who can show the impact of these programs and grant writers who can um, go out and seek uh, money from private and public organizations. Things like peer mediation coordinators. Colleges especially are kind of the hot area for restorative justice right now and quite a few colleges are adding restorative justice coordinators or peer mediators these days. Um, in conclusion, we hope that um, Goshen College uh, criminal justice and restorative justice majors can enjoy the benefits of an interdisciplinary major um, committed to the principles of diversity, competence, and equal justice for all. And I would just end by saying I'm, I'm delighted that um, the first ever course in, as far as I know, this just might be the first course in um, Introduction to Criminal Justice that I have the privilege of teaching um, this uh, fall is, uh, um, has 10 students in it and they are bright and inquisitive and there is um, uh, diversity of opinions in the classroom that's already apparent but everyone is respectful and we are uh, learning together as a community and um, about six of those uh, ten are our CJRJ majors or aspiring to do that I um, hope to get to know them a little bit more during advising coming up but um, I'm excited about this opportunity and this move into a, a somewhat of new territory for Goshen College and I'm happy to be a part of it and um, I guess I'll leave it there and uh, help out with any questions that you might have. So thanks for tuning in, of course.
I'm, I'm sorry. Um, okay, so I have, again, thank you for all who are here. And sorry, I have a question for Regina. Um, I'm wondering how, a uh, question about how does this new major compare or contrast with the existing PJCS or Peace, Con Peace Justice and Conflict Study major? And what, what um, you know, how, do, how would you, when you're talking to prospective students, what do you say about how it compares? Yeah, that's a good question. I would say that there is a lot in common and the students in both majors will in their in the course of their career at Goshen College will see each other a lot. I think that in the criminal justice restorative justice track, they will have more of those courses that deal with corrections that deal with law. We don't have a law requirement um, in PJCS, although we do every now and then we've got one now students whose intent is to go on to law school. So yeah, the traditional program um, will have a lot of crossover for the students in CJRJ, but there, there are um, some distinctions in what they're required to do. And then I think the places where they will see each other a lot will be in the choices that they have of courses filling out the major. Great, great. And for you, Rob, um, how would you, uh, how would this degree change the way a graduate, let's say if they chose a law enforcement uh, career, how would this impact or change the way they lead that career? Well, I would say, first of all, um, they would be far more aware than the typical um, criminal justice graduate of um, restorative principles and um, the creative and innovative possibilities that restorative justice offers. Um, and they might just, for example, if they um, uh, are dealing with youth who are um, starting down the wrong path, they might actively seek to channel those youth towards restorative programs in the community rather than um, give them a, risk their getting a, um, the mark of a criminal record, which will follow them. Mm -hmm. um, I would say additionally, our program um, has a, as a requirement, all students will take a course in um, race and ethnic relations. So we are not just in that course, but throughout the curriculum, our students will be confronted with the um, uh, difficulty and the problems of the criminal justice system, including and especially um, racialized mass incarceration and, um, and um, racial injustice in policing. So these, these graduates will be um, pushed to think hard about not only how the criminal justice system works, but um, the extent to which it doesn't work um, and what can be done about that. Um, so those would be the two main ways, in addition to some of the things that I was talking about in terms of they'll be pushed to develop um, some practical and applied skills. And this is a very interdisciplinary major by design. Um, yeah, I could say a little more about that, but I'll, I'll leave it there for now. Okay. Well, I don't know if either of you have anything more you'd like to add in conclusion. Um, I offer that chance now. Um, if not, we will we will sign off. Um, I would you like to say anything, either of you? Yeah, I would just pick up a little bit on uh, a further response to I think both of those questions. Uh, we look at in PJCS, and certainly that will happen in CJRJ, looking at how systems and institutions work, how they function. Um, that's, in fact, race and ethnic relations is the class that I'm going to in a few minutes. And we are moving into this deep dive of how is it that systems and institutions can actually perpetuate injustice. And uh, knowing how that happens is really, really important. And so I'm really excited about students having the opportunity to do exactly what Rob said, know how the systems work and how they don't work and how they don't work for certain people and understand that as also a problem that needs to be solved 
and it needs to be solved. It, people who are thoughtful um, and empathetic and know how systems operate need to be in those conversations and in those, uh, in those institutions. Rob, anything else? It's okay if you don't. Um, uh, I, I'll say one more thing. In, in, a, in terms of the difference between CJRG and PJCS, I think for first-generation college students, especially non-Mennonite first-generation college students who aren't familiar, who don't, didn't grow up with the language of peace building, that major just might not make a lot of, that might not capture their attention, peace, justice, and conflict studies. We're thrilled when it does, but in many cases, they're, when they're looking for a college with the major that they would like to have, um, that doesn't jump out at them as, a, as the kind of preparation they need. In many ways, it could be that preparation, but they don't see it there. And when they see criminal justice and restorative justice, especially that criminal justice, that, that, that jumps out to them and says, hey, this is a place I can go. We want some of those students, a lot of those students. We want them to come um, and think about criminal justice in deeply, critically, and um, professionally, and we think that we're missing too many of those students because they're not seeing what uh, they believe they need to, to have in order to graduate. Um, so it's possible to prepare yourself for a career in law, law enforcement, or corrections by getting a psychology major or a sociology major or political science major, but many 17 year olds aren't aware of that. They're, and, and they want to sort of take some classes directly tied to what they're interested in. So we want to give them that opportunity here while also pushing them broader. Mm -hmm. And um, we think that we're, you know, we, we, don't, we don't want um, to lose those students to other institutions because we want them to, to have the opportunity to get a Goshen, um, a Goshen education. Mm -hmm. That's a fantastic note to end on. Uh, thank you both very much for your, your uh, time this evening. And thank you to everyone out there who joined us tonight. Uh, we hope you uh, join, enjoyed this presentation and we'll come back for more of the GC Talks this week and beyond. Uh, to learn more, again, you can go to GC, I'm sorry, go to goshen.edu backslash GC Talks and find a list of other upcoming events. And we will also have recordings of events that have already happened there for you to watch later in case you can't fit it into your schedule these days. Thanks to everyone. Have a great weekend and, um, or have a great week, I mean, and uh, enjoy the week of events. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.